correctly on the computer. Let's do it. I am J.B. Bryan. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I started J.B. Bryan Financial Group, a registered investment advisory firm and the home of Afroeconomics in 1995. And I am excited about today's discussion because J.B. Bryan Financial Group has six Afroeconomics investment portfolios. And I'm telling you, this is the first time that I thought about I should talk more about it. I was talking to some young people that, um, last week, and they were saying, you know, that how the, what they wanted to invest in, and they were thinking about investing in one particular stock. And I said, wow, have you ever thought about doing an investment portfolio? And I was like, there's so many people that hang out with me all the time, and I don't talk to you all about what I really do. I am an investment advisor, so definitely I have my own investment portfolios, but it is rare that you actually hear me say that. But the members of Afroeconomics know about it. I also have the um, entrepreneurship member of Afroeconomics and a family membership, which is quickly becoming the most popular, is the family membership of Afroeconomics that allows me to financially empower the entire family. So let's talk about investment portfolios, what's hot and what's not, and make sure you check out the book, Afroeconomics, Our Black Wealth Matters. It is readily available to you on the website which is behind me. So I was thinking just before we went on air, I was like, oh, what is not hot? Being cheap, being cheap is not always the best option, is it? Because we're taught all the time, you see so many investment portfolio, well, not even, you don't see, you do not see on television <laughs> investment portfolios, but you see investment commercials that tell you about how cheap something is. They go, oh, call this 800 number and you can invest with us and it costs absolutely nothing or it costs this or it costs $1 or it costs whatever. But just because something is cheap does not mean it is the best thing for you. So keep that in mind. <laughs> Please do that just because something is cheap does not mean that it's good, does not mean that it's appropriate. It does not mean that it's going to help you and become financially empowered and most of all help you become wealthy because Afroeconomics is a financial management program designed for the advancement of black wealth in America and abroad and investment portfolios are an option so as a what is not hot being cheap is not always the best option but being I mean but being looking at your money and being careful with it it is always effective, but sometimes we try to be cheap in areas, in the wrong areas. Like, you, like when people want to um, buy something, I don't know, that's very, get a very expensive hairstyle, but buy cheap shoes. You know, there is nothing more uncomfortable in the world to me than cheap shoes. <laughs> and, and then you can say, they can make the same shoe and it can look like the same shoe, but a cheap shoe with a cheap sole with cheap fabric is not the same as a good shoe with a good heel and a good sole and made with good material. It is not the same. So, I mean, I'm, I'm serious, but at the same time, just because it's a very expensive shoe does not mean that it's a good shoe. So we have to be very careful on how we spend our money. And I feel that, of course, I feel that a good use of your money is getting the financial assistance that you need. So having an investment portfolio that is managed by an investment advisor, and then it could be a good use of your money if you like help in investing. If you um, trust that person, if you feel that uh, building wealth <laughs> is important to you, and building wealth is something you want to do, then it may be worth the investment. Thank you, Ebony Washington, for hanging out. Michelle Edwards, <laughs> Terry Cobbman. Thank you so much. We've got so many people on our uh, on the webinar, but also out in Facebook land. Herman Yancey, thank you so much. Uh, Joseph Edward Diggs, thank you for hanging out. Tony Mayfield, uh, I thank God for all of y'all. I can't, I can't see everybody, but I know. Give me some comments wherever you are. If you're on the webinar, please give me some comments in 
the Q&A area. Check it out. Take a moment now before we start really rolling because I have a, a way of, when I start, <laughs> I forget to stop. Oh, somebody said, her cheap shoes. Isn't that the truth? Look, some things to meet you. But so just being, making sure that when it comes to your money and managing your money, that you're getting the best use of your money <laughs> that you're getting. That if you're, if you're paying for, to have an advisor, Make sure that you're getting advice, that you're getting empowerment, that, that they actually care for you. But a lot of times, we don't see the fees that we're paying inside for things. You don't see how much something is costing you because they're not fully disclosing what you're being charged. And one thing about investment advisory firms is that we are regulated to make sure that everything is fully disclosed how I'm being paid, what you're being charged, how you're being charged, all of those things when you're working with a registered investment advisory firm are supposed to be, should be, or required to be fully disclosed to you. So make sure that whatever you're doing, that you understand that even on work retirement plans now, if you look carefully at your statement, they are beginning to fully disclose what are the fees and expenses that are involved in the investment options that you have in order to fully maximize those investment options. Maybe it's smart to become a member of Acroeconomics and during those four meetings that we have throughout the year that we are looking at your investment portfolio that you have and that we are maximizing it. It could be, it can make a huge difference in your future by paying a little, making the investment in membership, and then getting what you need. So I don't think that that is cheap. I don't think that it should be cheap. I think that we, it is my job as your investment advisor to make sure that you get to a point. My goal is to make sure that you feel like, oh my God, <laughs> this has helped me so much that it's priceless. I would do anything to have that, you know, that you would just feel that you're getting so much more than, than what I'm offering. And that is my responsibility to make sure that you feel that way. And I feel at a loss when you don't feel that you're getting everything that you should get out of a situation and you should make sure that you do. I meet so many people who say they've done things in their past, they put money away in a certain place, they haven't heard from that person where that money is, then uh, that shows right there that you're not working with a registered investment advisory firm, but it shows that you were sold something and you need to make sure that you're managing that prop that properly and that someone was compensated could still be being compensated and you are not getting the value for your investment and um, you need to get some help and make sure that even though you think you might not be paying anything for it because there's nothing coming in directly out that you know of. In many cases, there are expenses and fees involved and you're not getting any value from it. So make sure you get, get, you know, get in tune with your money, get in tune with what's going on. And it's challenging because we're all busy, but we like to make time. It requires that we schedule everything in now. So another what's not hot is placing all your eggs in one basket. If you think about it, this has gone back to way back in history, even if we think about our African history, when they were taking slaves and they were bringing them over in slave ships, they would have several slave ships and divide them up because unfortunately they knew that slaves were going to die. They knew that some ships weren't going to make it. And they were or at that point, already realizing that we could not have all of our eggs in one basket. They could not have all of their slaves in one boat. They were looking out for their investment. Now it's time for us to learn how to look out for ourselves, that we have to make sure that our money is diversified, that our income sources are diversified, that how, how we invest our hard-earned money is diversified and smart. And I, I don't know how that analogy came to me, but it's real. It's real. So the, um, so let's, let's make sure that we know that it's not hot to have all your eggs in one basket. It is hot to learn how to diversify. And just because something's cheap doesn't mean that that's where your money needs to be, right? So let's look at um, some reasons why 
we want to be um, diversified. What is what is hot, right? What's 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 hot? Well, we need to make sure that we're even if you start with a lump sum of money, that make sure that your money is always being added to, that you're taking advantage of a down market even. If the market were going down and you were just continuously investing in it, because if you just invest all of your money at just one point, then that might not be the best time. That could be like the peak of the market. <laughs> but if you continue to invest through a peak, through a valley, through a climb, through a time, you know, then you're allowing yourself to continue to build money over the long term through whatever fluctuations that the market has, getting it cheaper when the price is down. So a, a well diversified portfolio in many cases will allow you to systematically invest into the market, which is called the term dollar cost averaging. So look at definitely look it up. A key point in investing is to we 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 all know when it's time to get in. We know that we want to get in when we have money. <laughs> That's pretty much right. You want to get in the market when you have money, but do you know when it's time to get out? So you need to be in complete contact, in tune, in touch, talking with your advisor, in touch with your money. And even sometimes you have to decide at the beginning, this is the type of losses that I'm willing to take, or this is the gain that I'm looking for, but set up some rules for your uh, portfolio at the beginning. Communicate that with your investment advisor or make sure that you know it for yourself. So make sure that you know when it is time to get out. Know when to hold them, know when to fold them, right? <laughs> know what's going on. It may just mean that you need to make a slight change in the way things are allocated, but get in tune with what is going on in the market and most importantly, what's going on in your life, what your goals are, what your um, range is for your money, how much time you have for it, bro, what's your time horizon, you'll hear that term a lot, be in tune with that. So know when to get out. Uh, uh, another point I wanna make is to keep, um, Keep watchful for what is being um, charged to you in anything that you're doing. And I found a lot of times, unfortunately, when um, people are um, marketing to my community, they're being oversold and the, the details, the small print is not being explained to us. So we'll think that we have a particular protection or we have a particular portfolio or we have a particular investment and you really don't. And you'll say, well, that's what they said I had. Well, just because that's what they said that you had, that's, you know, that's just not enough. So make sure that you keep watchful of what you have. Look at the details, look at the expenses, look at, um, any commissions being charged, look at any fees being charged, look look at what is going on all the time. Look at every statement that is sent to you. Look at every email that you receive. Hey, <laughs> what it, what's that saying when they say, you know, more money, more problems? I don't believe it. I just believe to whom much is given, much is required, that we have an additional responsibility, but there's also an additional blessing in there. You know, every time you do something and you know that it's the right thing to do, when you really feel good, like, oh, wow, I'm glad that I took the time out to do that, that's what you got to do. Like I said, you got to schedule everything. You got to make an appointment with yourself to go over your investments every time you get a statement. So the, um, and then let's, let's make sure that we have a constant review. This is what's hot. What's hot in, in, in investment portfolios is making sure that you are constantly reviewing why you set this up anyway. You know, why did I start with this? At least once a year, you should get in tune with what is my risk tolerance? Why did, you know, and if you know your risk tolerance, then you, you may be more in tune with why I chose this particular stock portfolio or this particular bond portfolio. And then you, you might have a, a better understanding, but for most of us, we don't really know what our risk tolerance is. We haven't done this, like on my website, 
there is a questionnaire and it says, what's your risk score? And you can click right in there. And that's like a first step in getting to understand what, how, how comfortable you are with the volatility. And once I can tell that, uh, say you're terrified, <laughs> you don't think anything should ever be volatile. Once, once I know your risk tolerance or, or you know, and getting that general idea that you're a scaredy cat, then <laughs> I'm going to suggest a particular portfolio for a scaredy cat. But if I find out that you're like, no, I'm full steam ahead, then I'm going to select, suggest a portfolio that is appropriate for that. But a lot of times I see people who have an existing portfolio. They have things that are going on at work. I mean, they might have hundreds of thousands of dollars in their work investment account or their, their account that they set up for their business. They might have a lot of money in there. And when I look at that and compare it to what they said, what their risk tolerance is, and what they're actually doing, <laughs> you would be amazed at the huge gap between what you say you want and what you have. So make sure that you're taking time out to, to review it and get an understanding of, of, of what your risk tolerance is and are you into, is, does your portfolio reflect your particular risk tolerance to your goals, correct? So be in tune, look at what you're doing, look back at what you've done, and think about what you want your future to look like. Man, let's let's say a final point before I look at what, what any questions that you might have. Oh my goodness, there's three. <laughs> I'm so oh somebody said they love my natural. Um uh, how often should uh, it says um answer live. I love it. Done. It said, oh, I said answer lies. I mean, like that. I said, oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you. The, uh, how often should I meet with my advisor? And then, oh, it says I can answer by text or I can answer live. I'm going to answer live. How often should, very good question, Ms. Cotman. And I believe that we should, you should meet with your advisor, I believe, at least a call or a meeting every quarter. That's why I structured the Afroeconomics membership to have a quarterly meetings at minimum to and it might not mean that we need to change your whole portfolio but we're just making sure that we're communicating at least once a quarter about what you're doing away from my firm or what you're doing with my firm but the um but we definitely i believe that i believe in quarterly meetings and then another question is how are advisor fees assessed uh, advisor fees are assessed according to what has been disclosed to you in your investment agreement. Typically, it's by um, size of the account. Um, it might be based on size of the assets under management. It might be, advisor fee might be based on you just want to do generic financial planning and it's just by one project. So you have an advisor or financial planning agreement with your advisor, if you're working with a registered investment advisory firm, and that agreement will fully disclose what fees you're being charged and what those fees are covering and what it's for. Very good questions. Oh, and then look, so we answered that. I did all the questions. And then also, but definitely, thank you for the Q&A on that. And then let me check on, I should check on, I'm sorry to turn to my side, y'all. I'm gonna check on Facebook and make sure that you all didn't have any questions. Everybody that's on Facebook, make sure you share this with your, uh, your friends so that before I, I jump off, that they will actually have their, um, have their questions answered as well. I don't, let me try, I'm gonna try picking the refresh button and see if that will help. But thank you so much. Look, I hit the refresh in though. <laughs> <laughs> that whole Facebook screen went on. That's, that's definitely a refreshing. But the y'all are still there with me. And thank you, everybody in Facebook land and YouTube land. And on um, um, the webinar, your, your Q&A has been great. So let's, let's just go over. So we talked about some key things. What's not hot? Trying to, trying to be cheap when cheap is not what you really need. So cheap is not always the best option. Um, placing all your eggs in one basket, that's not hot. Making sure you learn about these key terms. Asset allocation, that is how you spread across asset classes and diversification. And what's the difference between the two? You can be diversified but not have a good asset allocation. Because you can be diversified but have everything all in one asset class. Where asset allocation 
is spreading across different asset classes. So a good uh, investment portfolio, in my opinion, is one that spreads you across at proper asset classes according to your goals and risk tolerance, right? So we talked about making sure you take a look back, look at what you're doing, look at your current investment portfolios, take the time to go to the Afroeconomics, J.B. Bryan corporate page, jbbryan.com, click for the risk calculator, get your risk score. It will cue that um, my executive assistant will call you if I don't directly and we'll schedule a time if you give the number. Typically, you're just giving me an email then I'll email you back and say, do you want to talk in more detail about this risk score? Or just call me directly and we'll go and I can send you an even deeper um, risk analysis. And then I'm um, looking at the, um, the Afroeconomics membership is very important in getting to know your financial goals and getting an understanding and it includes quarterly meetings as well. Keep it, continuing to build on your portfolio too, too often we set it and forget it. You set up your investment account, you forget about it. You don't go back and do the reviews regularly, and then you don't go and add to it regularly, most importantly. Because I guess if you were reviewing it, you'd be reviewing it because you know you're adding to it. So sometimes you're just like, ah, oh, put that there, and you don't go back and look at the portfolio. Well, a good advisor will be contacting you and giving you performance updates, but just getting updates and performance updates to me is not enough. We need to be talking about what you're looking at. Has something changed in your life? I want to be more in tune with you. So, and con so continuing to build, continuing to add, which allows you to do dollar cost averaging, another good term to look at, allowing you to add money into mar the market and and, get it, and, and when dollar cost averaging allows you to take advantage of the benefits of a falling market, because you're actually buying more shares of a good in portfolio. Now, so that, that, that's, that's, that's pretty deep, but it does pay. I know it does hurt. Like if we wouldn't run away from a store when they're having a sale, but sometimes we run away from the investment markets when they're down, when indeed that could be a great opportunity when you're buying the right thing. And so um, know when to get out of the market, know when to get out of something or get out of a bad portfolio even. Know when to hold them, know when to fold them. Keeping a watchful eye on the fees. Now, I told you cheap is not always best, but it's not always best to, it's never best to be paying for something that's not benefiting, for, benefiting you. So keep an eye on your bottom line. Stay in power. Take out time for your money all the time. You took out 30 minutes for this today. It will make it worth your while by calling me, emailing me, getting a complimentary consultation, getting the book, taking advantage of it, sending me an email right now and getting the ebook. I'll send it to you just because you watch to the end of the video. It's jb at jbbryan.com. If you would like the ebook of the Legacy Edition of Our Black Wealth Matters. It's all yours if you email me, jb at jbbryan.com. I feel like give it away a gift today. So that's a gift to you. Any questions before I get out, y'all? Everything is looking good. <laughs> Remember to, to, to keep up with things. The first thing that you can do today, you have an investment portfolio, even though you don't call it that. Yes, if you have something going on at work, Get the statement, look at what you're doing, look at your portfolio. And then if you want more details on how to enhance your portfolio or how to establish your portfolio or how to, how to take the next step, what's hot and what's not on investment portfolios, contact me, jb at jbbryan.com, the president and chief investment officer at JB Bryan Financial Group a registered investment advisory firm, Virginia, Maryland, Washington, D.C., and New York, and coming to a state near you as well. Have a great day. God bless y'all. Thanks a lot for hanging out with me today. I appreciate you. Please share. Please click like on my YouTube page and, and subscribe. Please, 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 please subscribe. I want to have more subscribers by the end of the summer than my daughter has on hers. <laughs> So I can, she doesn't know that's my goal, but I'm going to do it.
I got more views than her, but I don't have those subscribers. I need you. Please subscribe. Have a great day. God bless y'all.